welcome to Mentorship Monday. We are back and we're so happy to see you. It's Michelle and Marin, where we talk about all things spiritual, all things metaphysical, questions, our lives, everything that we're going through through this awakening process. And it's so good to have all of you here. And hi, Marin, my favorite Marin. How you doing? Hello, Michelle. I'm doing really good. I missed you so much. I missed you too. I missed you too. That was a, a bit of a long break, but it was a good break though, don't you think? Because a lot happened. I think I think yes. both of us can yeah, say a lot, a lot happened energetically. Today. Yes, we do. We do. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're just going to dump it all out today for all of you. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, yes, so sorry we missed you last week. We um, had every intention of getting together and then about, I don't know, I think maybe like 30 minutes before we were supposed to meet, my um, son, he was um, in the backyard and happy as can be and he was running up the steps to get to our patio and missed the step and fell and he caught himself but the patio is like higher and it hit him Mm. right in the head and Mm. um, split his head open. And it was Michelle, like the most terrifying moment of my life. He ran in and like this, like blood was everywhere. And, um, and then my husband was like, grab, you know, grab something for like, you know, give me a towel. Give me something. So I give him a towel and I'm like, my gosh, we're going to need stitches. And he was like, well, look, and there was a hole in his head, like, um, like oh. this big, like the size of a, like it went to the bone and then like his, it, it was a circle. Like, and it was like, you know, you watch those war movies and like the person is like half their head blown off and they're like, am I going to make it? And you're like, oh my God. Like, I felt like that's what it was like. He was like, is it bad? And I was like, oh my God, we're just going to go get stitches. So I just put him in the car yeah. and we're just so fortunate yeah. to live right next to like an urgent care emergency room type of a place. Good. And, um, yeah. drove him right there. There was no, no wait, no line. We literally got right in and, um, the, t- the doctors took such good care of him. So it was like every time so someone brave. new would come, you know, he had towel over it. He was so <sighs> great. Oh my goodness. So he had this big towel over his head. And then every time um, a nurse or doctor would come in, they'd be like, okay, let me see it. And they'd be like, oh, okay. <laughs> you could tell on their face, they were not expecting it to be as big and as like, I mean, it, mm-hmm. anyways, so, um, mm-hmm. so that was an ordeal and it just, it just scared me so much. And, um, but I just. I think I just walked away with gratitude because I was just, yeah. I just felt so lucky that we were so close to help. And I, you know, I think about the kids that get hurt in the wars and there's, it's so hard and it takes so long to get help and just to be so close to such good care was just, it just was so comforting. And then, you know, random accidents happen all the time and to just know that I was walking away from the urgent emergency room with my son made me feel so lucky too so all in all I feel very fortunate very lucky Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. but you know we have security cameras and so my husband like watched them and it just kind of breaks your heart because he was just like like just as happy as can be walking up the steps, you know, and it's like, why, why did that happen? Why did that have to happen to him? You know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. I, um, I kind of meditated on it and I got like a little something. I don't know if you had any, I mean, things happen, like things happen. Like we're not going to go through life and like not have any, yes. you know, issues, yes. traumas, yes. accidents, whatever. Like, I just think that's not possible. So I do feel right. like, you know, and when I was in the emergency room, like I just remember, I kept hearing like, this is his vessel. It's okay. This is his vessel. Like, yes. you know, like it's okay. It's very superficial. So, um, and 
and, and that really is the, the truth because accidents do happen. You know, some accidents may have some meaning to it, such as the time, the place, the date, the, um, there could be a reason, um, like in his case specifically, I don't get anything like that. Um, what I do feel from it is I do feel that, uh, this is part of a vibrational shift, ushering change. So there is some change, um, It's interesting because when you were just saying, like, you know, we can't go through life without things happening, that's part of what I feel with this, is it was more about the experience than the actual incident itself. It's the experience around it. Um, there's also a demonstration coming from him on how he handled it. And this is something he's going to remember. Like, he's always going to remember this. He's always going to. There is a little piece, I have to say, that has something to do with his consciousness. Because when I said change, I got this energy coming in. And think about the area that it happened for him. Um, like, where yeah. exactly? Yeah. Um, so that's exactly, that's actually what I got, too. I got that yeah. this is like the beginning of like a next phase. Yes. And it's so interesting because um, uh, he's also been eating a lot. Like, so then I was like, is it like a growth spurt phase? Is that what you mean? Like, ever since he fell, he has eaten like two meals per meal. Like, mm. we went out to eat at a restaurant. He ate all of his food. And then um, we ordered dessert. And it was kind of gross and like no one liked it, which is odd. And um, he was like, I don't want to eat that. Like, so I'll tell you, we got, we went to a, um, a Mexican restaurant and we ordered churros for dessert and they put yeah. like toffee in the churros. I've never heard of that before. Yeah. And it was really odd mm -hmm. and kind of gross. And so mm -hmm. we didn't want to eat the churros, but it came with like a little scoop of ice cream. So we were like, well, why don't you have the ice cream? And um, he was like, I don't want ice cream. I want more food. Can you take me to McDonald's so I can get a burger? <laughs> He's like eating that much. It's wow. unbelievable. So we went to like, um, after the emergency room, um, well, when, when we were in there, we had to like wait for like four hours for observation. Yeah. Like anytime yeah. someone comes in with a head injury. Yeah. So we had to wait there for a long time. So we got, um, um, McDonald's while we were at the, um, urgent care emergency room. Yeah. And then, um, and then he came home and then he was hungry for whatever we had for dinner. I can't remember what it was. And then, um, his brother, we were, everybody was traumatized. Like yeah. his brother is like such an empath and he yes. was crying. Everybody yeah. was crying. You know, it was so cute yeah. because my older son was <laughs> like, I'm at a, I'm at a stress level when we got home from the hospital, because I'm at a stress level of 75 out of 100. <laughs> That's pretty good that you can measure that. That's pretty good. That's aware. That's good. That's cute. <laughs> you know, so anyways, so he wanted pizza that night. So we ordered it. Like, we were just like, we've been through trauma. Like, yeah. you get whatever. Right. That's right. That's so, right. So, um, so he wanted a pizza. So we ordered a pizza for him. And then I can't remember what our actual meal was, but it was something. And, um, oh, burgers, burgers. That's what it was. We grilled out burgers. And, um, like, I was like, we can just order out, Josh. Like, you don't have to cook burgers. And he was like, I need to be do like, because my, my mom came over to check on him. My dad came over. Like, everybody was coming over to check on him. Yeah. And, um. And he was like, I just want to grill people burgers. It's like giving me something to do. It's taking my mind yeah. off of it. So, yes. okay. So Quinn like had chicken nuggets in the emergency room. Then he had a burger, a grilled burger. And then my other son wanted pizza. So we ordered him a pizza. And then Quinn, after eating his entire burger, ate like two slices of like deep dish pizza. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, where is this going? And he's been like that ever since, like hmm. just eating galore. Uh yeah. So That's I feel like it's some it's, kind of yeah, change. Yeah. There, yes. There is some big change taking place. So that's the first word that came across. And it's change in 
metaphysical change. Um, like, so their change, spiritual change, mental change, emotional, physical, it is on all levels. So it's so interesting yeah. because when we go through energetic shifts, we're either going to require um, possibly more food, uh, more fluid, more sleep. Like, think of all of these. It's a growth spurt. It is a growth mm -hmm. spurt. And um, there's quite a, um, I'll call it like the energetic spider web that reaches out through your whole family and through everyone because he is holding like this ball of energy, <clears throat> whoa, right in the throat area, that's expanding, that's really expanding. And it's creating these little triggers in everybody that are there for growth, there for more opening. So if we really look at, you know, all of these things that happen to us on an individual basis, you know, you can really dig into it and say, wow, like that was connected to, and I'm saying this as you will look back in six months and go, oh, interesting, because I feel there's going to be more information that will kind of titrate out from this experience. So I'm so glad he's doing well, though. And that he's feeling better. And uh, oh, oh. It, was, it was unbelievable. So we were on our way to the on our way to the emergency room. And mm -hmm. he was like, I don't want to get stitches. I don't want to get stitches. And I was like, you know, sometimes things are so bad yeah. that that thought is actually the best option. And it's not as bad as you thought it was going to be. And it's a relief. And yeah. so, like, don't worry. It's going to be okay. And, um, anyways, so he was like a champ. He did so good with his stitches, he got eight stitches and he was so brave and, um, and I'm just so proud of him. And I, I think, yeah, he's like, Oh, I, that was, you know, you work things up and your things sound so bad as a kid, you know, and you work it up and yeah, so it's yeah. very sweet. Yeah. Oh, and head injuries too. They like, those areas having a head injury that is uh the blood that comes from that you know oof. as a mom too seeing all of that I can just imagine how that made you feel yeah well, well but anyways <clears throat> so we had homework to do uh -huh, Michelle uh -huh. yes our um manifestations you were going to manifest mm -hmm. flowers i believe how mm -hmm. did that mm -hmm. go well actually um it, now this isn't completely fair because i did have an awareness that i was going to be planting so it's not completely fair okay because i didn't have flowers come up in the way that um uh they just appeared but I will say that I had flowers that doubled, which seems like overnight. Um, I So long story short, I went to the nursery and bought some flowers and did some gardening. And I am not kidding you. There is one flower in particular, and it was it's called a, um, I don't want to say creeping season. And it literally overnight, it was just this teeny tiny little flower. The next morning, it was already creeping up my pole like I, I couldn't even believe it it was just I'm like am I like didn't I just plant that last night like didn't I just put that in there last night and like the flowers are absolutely beautiful but I I gotta say it's not necessarily what I manifested it's what my son manifested so I'm going to tell you something really really quick and this actually just happened and it's absolutely crazy but so Marcus Marcus has, um, he's very fixated on fast food. Okay. He loves fast food restaurants. He loves the whole atmosphere of it. He's got it. And we have to be very careful with him because we are, and have been for quite some time changing his diet. But with Marcus, um, and I'll, everyone with autism is different, but with Marcus, um, he, has a lot of goal orientation around food. So we try very hard to mix that up for him. So we have a board in our living room by like by our front stairwell. And on that board is the month and then 
for that week are the different goals. So um, it may be a, a trip to a fast food place is like a big goal, you know, for after school. So we tried to put in smaller goals like a trip to the park, a trip to like different things that he can do towards the end of the day at school. Because for him, he needs some sense of motivation to be able to get yeah. through the tasks that don't make sense to him, the tasks that are right. mundane to him. So anyway, yeah. long story short, uh, when we are in the off days, so specifically on a weekend, we are, um, you know, we've gotten him to a place where we don't order takeout. We're not unless it's a certain occasion. And we're doing this for the benefit of our whole family. This has been something that's been going on for a while. And as when Rob was diagnosed with um, diabetes, we as a family started to make a lot of changes. But you can't always put, you know, Rob and I have made a lot of changes, but our kids maybe be in different places. So we try to set the best example that we can. And I'm sure you and many other people listening can understand how challenging that can be. However, well, I just this told you about my and yes yes so yes yes so and we like I remember when I was sick and through that period I mean we would buy takeout and order stuff all the time because I couldn't cook my husband has like two things that he can cook and luckily (laughs) one of my daughters is a great cook but she also works full-time and everything too so you know things have changed quite a bit anyway we are in a different state now so this weekend, Marcus, yesterday, um, I had no sessions yesterday. Yesterday, I dedicated to house cleaning and everybody else was out of the house. So it was just myself and Marcus. So I was trying to get things done. And he came up to me, I don't know how many times, specifically asking for Taco Bell and a Crunchwrap Supreme. Okay. That's not <laughs> what he normally gets at Taco Bell. Okay. Yeah. That's not his order. So for whatever reason, that's what he wanted. and. When Marcus is fixated on something, it is not just a mention, it is continuous. He'll come back to me several mm-hmm. times and I will, you know, it, it really tests patience a lot, but I will say, Marcus, today is not a takeout day. We're not going to do that today. This is what we have to eat. And I offer to make him something at home. You know, I can make him a homemade one. No, that wasn't good. So he, he had his dinner. He kind of hummed and hawed about it a little bit last night. But he kept mentioning, could I have that for my treat next week at the end of the week? And I said, yes, you can. So he kind of left it at that. Here's the crazy part, okay? So my daughter, um, she had this blister, this problem with her foot. And um, she needed some certain pad for her foot for today. So she just went online and just ordered it to have it come last night. So she. (laughs) <laughs> the door goes or the alarm goes off and the order was dropped off it was taco bell at the door okay and not the no toe it was or... it was five crunch wrap supremes five plus marcus's regular order there was two hundred dollars worth of taco bell i'm not kidding you 192 dollars came to that somebody had ordered all Marcus's favorite food, all of his order, soft tacos, Dorito tacos, and Crunchwrap Supremes. Oh my gosh. Four four of his favorite drinks and one sugar-free drink for Rob. (laughs) Kidding you. We're like, what? My daughter was like, uh, I think I better make a phone call. So she called and she's like, hi, um, I just, or like she ordered, a, a it was just this, like a, like blister, like for blisters, like for your feet and that, yeah. it was some kit or something, which was like $10. Yeah. And she's like, hi, like this is all I ordered and this is what we got. And they said that there were two names, her name, exactly the same, two SGs, Shelby Gray two names and um the driver must have mixed it up so somebody who ordered the two hundred dollars worth of taco bell got a blister back <laughs> so anyway she's like i don't know what to do so they ordered two hundred dollars i know taco bell. they're like 
you know, they're like, we're really sorry, you know, of course, keep it because we can't, you know, hide yeah. and all that. We can't pick it back up and, and deliver it to them. Right. And then they sent what she actually ordered. But we were stunned. And I said, Rob, do you realize that's all Marcus has been talking about all day? And it got delivered. Marcus was elated. He was oh, elated. He was that's like, amazing. yeah. So he took a sip, had a bite of it, put it in the fridge to have today. So he gets Taco Bell today. So he made oh. it happen. So I thought that manifestation story was much better than my creeping Susan doubling itself. But they're both amazing. But yeah. that is incredible. <laughs> Isn't what that a, awesome? a rock star. Oh my gosh. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I said to him last night, I said, Marcus, I said, did you ask the universe for Taco Bell? And he goes, I did. And I, <laughs> he was wishing for it. And he just kept asking. Knowing he was going to get it, he placed his order. He laid out exactly what it was that he wanted, and he yeah. believed he was going to get it, and it happened. And the vehicle that it took had to come through somebody else. So the, right. the energy just found its way to make it happen, and there it was. Wow. That is incredible. <laughs> it's I'm really still shocked incredible. because... <laughs> We've got the picture of it sitting on the doorstep, and there's like three bags of food, and and five. There's five in our family, and five drinks. It's like the chances. Yeah. Oh yeah. my gosh, I would be like looking. Do you have like the Taco Bell app or whatever the order app is? Like, did you do this, Marcus? Like, did you ask him? We or oh, we this, checked. Like, we checked. Okay. We checked. We were like, okay, wait a minute here. Let's make sure that we didn't just spend two hundred dollars on Taco Bell. But no, 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 no. I'll add one more step to it too. Here's what's crazy: is the last name of the other Shelby is the same last name as Rob's birth father, who uh, oh, passed then. away several years ago. Who we've had a little some kind of synchronicities some little synchronicities that have taken place and this was connected oh, to Shelby. He, so yeah. he gave that. Yes. Yeah. He gave yeah. that to Marcus. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I love that. That yeah. is so, so that was sweet. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. That is really, really cool. Really so sweet. Tell it, tell us yours. What, what happened with well, you? Well, mine does not top that. That <laughs> is amazing. That's, and you just, love Marcus like it just yeah. you know like it's so oh, magical because if you just think about uh, and I'll just say this quickly so you can share yours but it's so interesting because Marcus you know the way Marcus is he's very present right he's very present mm -hmm. he he does have some worries and and he worries a lot lately about zombies that's his big thing he wants to know do zombies have a heart um do what color is zombies blood like he asks a lot of really you know are they real are they like he's really fixated on um you know things that he sees stories that he hears what's real what's not real so it's a really interesting navigation with that with him and so that's kind of where his awareness and fears are right now but when it comes to like himself like what do I want for myself he's always been you know kind of looking back he's always been a manifester of course he has think about the things that have happened but that's just the biggest example I can think of right now but it's just amazing because of everything that we speak of of how you break down energy to understand how the manifestation process works <laughs> he's a kid present in the moment and just threw it out there and wanted it and the right circumstances you know it came real fast in the same day yeah wow that's crazy that's mm -hmm. so i wonder too if like because you know how manifestation it's like you can't you can't be too heavy like you have to like ask and let it go kind of a yeah. thing mm -hmm. and you say he's like very persistent which mm -hmm. makes me feel like he's like too heavy but I wonder if the fact that you were like, today is not the fast food day where he missed, must have like let it go. Yes. And then it came. Yes. Yes. Because so he was cool. And so, and 
like a little backstory about Marcus, the persistence. So there's like a, a persistence of, um, like, how do I explain this? When one of my girls were younger and let's say, um, they were persistent on asking for something. It was more of a way of, I'm not going to give it, give up until you say yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that's a, 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 many of us, of course, have gone through that with our children. I'm going to keep asking until you say yes. It's different with Marcus. It's not so much of a, in the beginning, it's an asking, but then it turns into more of a, um, affirm what it is that I want. So it's more of a security because he goes through that with a lot of things. So it's almost like a reassurance. Like it's, it's interesting because it doesn't feel the same. The energy is not the same in it. So when you ask that question, the persistence is more like, I need you to affirm it's going to happen. So he asked about it all day, like, um, you know, is this something that can happen today? And it took him literally from, I'll say about 11 o'clock in the morning is when he started till about dinner time, to when he stopped asking. So it wasn't, <laughs> actually, I'm just thinking now, maybe there was a little of that persistence in there. But it, it just didn't, it wasn't the same because it wasn't really a, he wasn't pushing. It was like he was repeating it. Like you have to really be in Marcus's energy to see how he, how he operates yeah. because he doesn't yeah. really communicate. He's just same. a firm, yeah. Yes. Yeah. He's yes. like, it, it's going to happen, right? Yep. It's going to happen, right? Yes. He yes. said, it's my, and, yeah. And interestingly, I'm just thinking too, he had Taco Bell coupons that he had pulled out of the recycle. So he, because he loves going through flyers, so he had pulled the Taco Bell coupons up and had them cut up and laid out with his Lego, and he was playing with it. So he had it sitting right there. I'm sure we could deconstruct all of it and really look at how does this fit with the way that we manifest. We could learn like, so much from Marcus. Coupons for the vision board, the vision yeah. board, and the visualization. Yeah, yeah. He was playing. He was having a great day. He really did have a great day yeah. yesterday, too. So, yeah. Oh, buddy. So, That's awesome. Yeah. That's really yeah. cool. That was cute. Well, um, so I also, at first, I immediately thought, oh, I'll manifest flowers. But then, like you, I was like, oh, that's not fair because my yeah. birthday was that week. And yeah. I knew I always get flowers from my coworkers on my birthday. Mm -hmm. So it's like, mm -hmm. oh, that doesn't really count. But I did get other flowers from my mom which I yeah. know it's like a birthday you do yeah. get flowers on yeah. your birthday so quite fair but um I did get flowers from my mom but that wasn't what I was trying to manifest I was like what can I manifest that I would want and um so it's like cookies I let's let's go like because we were trying to like it's not you know we didn't want it to be too uh heavy of a yeah. request yeah. Right? so right. it was arbitrary so it's like okay I'll, re I'll request some cookies and literally that night for dinner, my husband was like, do you want, he um, was grilling and we had these like little um, cast iron dish, like little tiny cast iron uh, skillets. And so sometimes yeah. he'll put cookie dough in them and like put them on mm -hmm. the grill and it's so good. Yeah. Yeah. And so um, he literally, I think I was even like, like just got off the call with you. And he was like, do you want a skillet cookie tonight? And I was like, that was fast. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so anyways, so I like immediately got a cookie and then I thought I was done. And then, but it was like the next day at work, we had a meeting and what did they put in the center of the table for the meeting, but cookies. <laughs> and then, um, there was like another cookie that somehow came up. And then for my birthday, um, me and another coworker, we actually share a birthday. We have the same birthday. And mm -hmm. so our tradition is you always get flowers on your birthday and they bring in like a special treat for your birthday and you get to pick what it is. And like the whole mm -hmm. office eats it. So some people will do cake. Some people will do donuts, like whatever, you know? And, um, so I always ask for fruit and, um, my, it's funny because my coworker, she's on like a no sugar diet and she asked for cookies. And so there on my birthday, I had cake, I had fruit and cookies, you know, like it just kept coming. And I was like, this is ridiculous. Why did I not manifest 
something more than cookies. Like what's wrong with me that, that you know, like I got to like really up my asks because that was too easy. But, so, you know, it, like what you were saying, like not having that heavy attachment to it. Right. I remember you manifested. Do you remember, I don't know if it was last year or the year before the $5, it's a $5 bill. Or $5. Yeah, I don't remember, remember that. I can't remember the full yeah. story, but you had $5 that kept popping up or something like yeah. that. I've done that with loonies. Like we have, instead of dollar bills in Canada, we have loonies, like little gold okay. coins. So I've done that with loonies okay. before because we need to have a loony to go to the grocery store for the carts, right? You have to put a loony in. And uh, I would always be at, like, because I don't carry cash on me hardly ever anymore. And uh, no. I would get to the grocery store and be like, oh, God, my loony. And I remember manifesting loonies that I would always have my loony. And I kid you not, it doesn't matter when or where. I always have a loony for myself and a spare one for my mom in case she doesn't have one. Always. Always. Wow. Yeah. And always the best parking spot, too. And what? Always the best parking spot, too. Oh, I, I know. I did that. Yeah. Yes. I yeah. Had, I, yesterday, I ran into Target, and, and there was it was just packed. And I was driving forward, and, like, I had a thought, like, oh, my God, I'm going to, like, be parking in the back, like, you know, like yeah. a mile yeah. away. And then I, I was like, no, there is always a spot for me. There is always a spot for me. Yeah. <laughs> and I, like, turned yeah. to the next row and, like, whoop. I got right in right yeah. after the handicap spot. So yeah, it's, okay, yes, it's so funny because my, my mom, I, I often take my mom with me when I do my stuff because she, she drives just a small little bit, like a little circumference. But when I go to the grocery store, I try to take her with me if I can, or, you know, to whatever she needs to do. So she'll always say, do your magic thing, do your magic thing so we can get a good spot. And I'm like, mom, it's not my magic thing. <laughs> I'll try to explain to her. I'm like, mom, you can do this. You can do this. Which brings me to something else I want to tell you that um, okay. is kind of going back to, you know, our experiences and everything that's happened. But I went through a very weird situation this last week. And um, it's my mom is what just kind of peaked it. So last Monday, well, one of my daughters, it was her birthday on Tuesday. So Monday night, I took my other daughter out and we were just going out to get a few things for her birthday in the evening after she was done work. So anywho, um, I went over to go see my mom and see what she needed for me to pick up because they live next door and she wasn't feeling very well. My mom has had a problem with um, balance. So uh, it's it feels like it's... Um, it does feel stress induced, but everything I get back has to do with the nervous system. And um, she just gets very dizzy and she's gone for every medical test, ever, had everything done. They can't find anything. So she was having a really rough day and she was just really tippy. And I said, OK, well, before I go, you know, go and sit down. Let's do some energy work before I go. I felt great that day. Like I was not feeling ill. I didn't have any, you know, I, I haven't had illness like I did before for a very long time. Like, yes, we get little, you know, days of the headache and stuff like that, but not like I, I had before. So I was having a really good day and I sat and I did some energy work with her and um, it was like no movement in her chakra system. Like everything felt like it was really plugged up. So I worked on her for maybe about 15 or 20 minutes and she said she felt a little bit better so I went off my daughter and I were in the mall picking up a few things and I got hit with this unbelievable heavy exhausted just dizzy my eyes started to feel strained like it was just the weirdest thing and it just hit me all of a sudden and I'm like whoa and I used the, the washroom in the mall and I said to myself, or, you know, to spirit, if this isn't mine, take it away. Like, take away what's not mine, I'm trying to figure out what's going on. And it kind of hung around, but it wasn't, like, it wasn't unbearable. It just, you know, it was something I just noticed. And I looked in the mirror, washing my hands, my eyes were all bloodshot. 
I was like, wow, you know, I didn't have a tough day. I wasn't on the computer all day or anything else like that. Like, why do I feel this way? And by the time I got home, I was chilled. Like I had like chills. I was freezing cold. And I thought, am I coming down with something? I didn't have a sore throat. I didn't have anything like that going on. I took my temperature. I wasn't fevered. So I just went to bed, got some rest. And when I woke up the next morning, I was really dizzy. I was unbalanced, really dizzy. And um, I would call that because I, I do have a diagnosis similar to my, well, it is the same diagnosis as my father, which is spinocerebral ataxia. And that is, uh, can affect my speech and my balance and all of those kinds of things. So sometimes when I get overly tired, like I have to be very aware of where I put my energy, what I focus on, what I do, how I take care of myself, because if I don't, then I go through these type of stages. Uh, where really sleep is the only thing that will help me. Okay. So um, I was lucky that on Tuesday I was able to rest most of the day. And I thought if I just kind of rest and get myself through, it was my daughter's birthday that day. And we went for dinner that night and, you know, I, I felt well enough to go for dinner. And then I started to get the chills again. I got hot. It was so weird, but I wasn't sick to my stomach. I wasn't like, I was just really tired and getting the chills. And so I did some meditation that night and I called in some assistance and did some healing work. And I literally was lulled to sleep that night. That's how it felt. And I had a really good night's sleep, woke up the next morning feeling a little bit better, but I had almost like when you have a fever, you know, when you get a hot fever and you sweat and you break, like you you break the fever and you just have all of that sweat. That's what had happened. But there was no fever. There was no, I'm like, this is really bizarre. Okay. But let me that add one. Me. But not this week. That happened to me like a year ago where it was I like I had, that. You know, I had a fever and chill, but I didn't have a fever, but I had everything like a fever, yes. but there was a fever. Yeah. Really weird. Really weird. Yeah. You know, the next thing that happened was I go to jump in the shower that morning and I felt like my arms felt hot, my specifically on my left hand side and on my hips. It was like hot, like I'd had a sunburn, like I was out in the sun. I go to get in the shower and I look in the mirror and I've got stripes, like I mean like bands, almost like I had been out in the sun and put suntan lotion on and didn't put it on like I made a pattern on myself and yeah. I'm like what is that and I looked down at my hip two stripes on my hip as well and then there was one on my right right hand side and I'm like that is the weirdest thing ever and so I I did a little I had my shower and everything and I did a little check-in on myself and I got that it was ascension it was ascension and now my body does release a lot through the skin that is just you know many do but that is something that's not abnormal and I what I remembered was two years ago um I think it was two years ago I had an issue very very similar where it came about one Saturday morning where I had the same thing I had like the, the chills and I didn't feel well. I wasn't sick to my stomach. I wasn't throwing up, nothing like that. I didn't have a fever. But I remember Rob and the kids went somewhere and came back, and I had this rash that looked like I had been out in the sun. I say rash, it was hot red on one side of my arm and just like a box on my back. Like somebody had painted a red box. And that was it. And I was. Now, that one was a little different because I was, like, not right. Like, I felt like I was catatonic. It was a really weird situation. And I went to the hospital, and they tested me for everything. There was nothing. And they admitted me for the night because they couldn't understand, like, what was going on with my body. And they wanted to run some tests on me. And everything came back normal. Everything. And Eric said to me, everything will come back normal. It's ascension. Like it's your body is shifting. You're going through, you're doing a release. So what I have now, and 
when these things happen too, like, yes, I felt it was ascension, but sometimes it can take a few days to get all of the information, right? We don't always get it all at once. And maybe other people do very quickly for themselves. But for me, when I'm getting information for myself, it's a process, right? It's always a process. So yeah. just in case anybody thinks that I'm getting all the answers all at once, right? that's not how it works, right? So, yeah. um, but uh, what came up was I was releasing forgiveness and the connection, um, what they had shown me and this way it came to me talking about my mom in the parking spot is that was connected to her as well. So there was a release taking place with her and all of the, like we can, we can say that this is happening in the moon and this is happening with the solar storms and those things all play a part in it. So when we're going through these processes, those things help assist release. So when we have any resistance within ourselves, it can create um, maybe a, a, a little more challenging time, but what they brought forward for me was it was about forgiveness for myself and also forgiveness towards other people. And I say this because forgiveness is not always a one-time deal. We don't always, you know, we can uh, look at relationships in our life. And this is specifically what it was connected to for me is certain relationships in my life. Some that I don't have connection with anymore at all, but it's more of a forgiving myself for not having the awareness at that time to maybe behave differently or I don't know if this is making sense, but it's kind of like a, I have more awareness today about myself, about where I'm at, where I know if I were to go back into some of these situations years ago, that I would have behaved differently. I would have maybe expressed myself differently and it's so easy to push those things under because what was said to me in meditation was whatever we have within us that's at a deeper state will take a different form so it's easy for us within the mind when we're distracted and busy in our day-to-day -day life it's easy for us to be able to say, well, I've dealt with that. I understand that. I've got awareness of that. Of course, I forgive myself. I forgive this other person and to carry on. But often there are these deeper layers within us and they will continue to keep taking different forms until the time is ready for release. Because it's not always about what we consciously want in our mind to do, but it is a process. It's a process of taking place. And for me to reach uh, another level of consciousness, which is what I'm doing. That's my intention is to continuously grow, to grow my awareness, to uh, grow to, to deeper understanding so that I can not only live with more joy and more peace in my own life and my family, but to be able to help others do the same. And so these pieces that come up can be disguised in so many other different things and so we're not really deeply aware of what they are and this was a whole process of a deeper level of forgiveness and what I feel gifted with in this experience is I'm gifted with a a new sense of again like I spoke about this last month a new sense of perception about myself and about others and it feels like less of a them and me and more of a, it, it just is. And it's okay. And it's okay that, you know, this is this way. And it's okay that I'm over here. And it's, you know, it's, I would say more of a oneness with a peace. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. It's funny. That's kind of what um, message um, I received from my, grandfather this week was um be proud of who you allowed yourself to be and it makes me think back to my past too and how I was different and to like not have not that there's shame but like you know you're just a different person 
Um, but what with each choice that I made to become who I am today, like I should be proud of each choice. And I feel like that is you as well. Like with the forgiveness, like yeah, each mm. little choice you made and step towards who you are today should mm-hmm. release and allow you to forgive because the, those were active choices that you made and you allowed yourself yeah. to be this, who you are today, which yeah. means you acknowledge yeah. that who you were then is not who you wanted to be. And like, yes. that's kind of your, I don't know, like. 180 repentance kind of you know what I mean like yeah. just the mm-hmm. change that you made and so and to be proud of that so yes and to really, really cool to be proud your- to be proud of the experiences um you know I feel such a peace in myself today to be able to be okay with where things are um and I truly mean this as a a non-judgmental place of myself, a compassionate place of myself to, to have this place of, I can be happy right where I am. I can feel good right where I am. And like you said, all the choices that I had made in the past, it's okay. It's okay. You know, uh, it's okay that I see things differently today. It's okay that my awareness is you know, maybe in a different place. And had many things have not happened, I wouldn't have this awareness. You know, so it's it's just so interesting because my perspective on life is just from such a different viewpoint today and not so much of a viewpoint through another person's lens. Because I could never feel like I was looking at my life through my lens. I felt like I was always looking at my life through somebody else's lens. And what do they see about me? And yeah. And I really really denied that part of me and you know, even denied the thought that I was doing that. You know, but being able to recognize that deep down inside that's exactly what I was doing. I was so consumed with what other people thought and protected myself so much from what other people thought and do I care what people think <clears throat> yes I do but I don't care what people think as to let me rephrase that I care about how others feel I don't care about other people's yeah. opinions of what I do. I care about those that I, that are in my life that support me. I do care, but I look at it through my own lens. now. Yeah. That's funny because that's kind of the other meaning I got from that message was I've worked so hard. I've made so many good choices to be where I am today. So be proud of that and don't, yeah, don't worry what other people think. Don't worry about opinions. You have worked so, or I have worked so hard and you have worked so hard to be where we are and we should just be proud, period. Yes. <laughs> you know, it's true. Just don't, yeah. No. It's true. And, and that I'll tell you from being a place of, um, a, a people pleaser and, you know, just that realization, a deeper realization of how much that pleasing others was just filling that need of myself not avoiding or keeping myself from from having conflict with people. It was like filling a need for me all along and really not about anyone else at all, but about me. And it's just, uh, it's quite amazing to have, to have these shifts in June particularly this month is um it feels like a very positive month for many people but it is a month of awakening and many of us are having many many awakenings continuously 
so many realizations and that is such a good thing because every shift we have um there's a i think that there's a full moon coming up in a couple weeks but um if you're listening to this or watching this right now and you're having all kinds of thoughts of the past and i've had dreams and i'll just say this my dreams have been insane but they have been about every single person in my life people that i've not even contacted or had like and i mean significant people i've had relationships with have popped up in my dreams and it feels like it's like a wrapping up right it's like they've come up in my dreams and it's not been negative at all it's been more of a um I feel like there's been closure in so many ways and some of these people have passed on you know that they're not even here in the physical and i i'm just so fascinated with how everything seems to be coming up on this deeper level once again and it and it will it will this journey is so full of this but we're getting into this place of no man's land like wow like what's next you know how much like what are we we are creating from a blank page we really are and filtering out all of these feelings and and in our subconscious and emotions so as i was saying if you are listening to this and watching this and you feel like you're stepping back into some of these thoughts or you're thinking about relationships or people that you haven't thought of in five years and why is this coming up now it's coming up because you're about to shift so don't let it get you down go into it look at it feel it you know understand it and thank it love it love all the lessons love everything that it's given you and let it go i just got the visual of you know those um uh when somebody celebrates and they light those i don't even know what, what they're called they look like balloons so they light them and they go up in the sky oh, at night. Lanterns. Yes, the lanterns. Thank you. Yes, I just saw one of those. Like, let it go. Let it go up in the air. Yeah. With love. Watch it go. Yeah. That's so cool. Okay. I That's funny because I've had crazy dreams shit too. Yeah. But I had this one dream and it's like it could take a whole episode. So <laughs> I'm not going to talk about it. But, um, but yes, crazy dreams too. Okay. But before we go. Yes. Yeah. Guess what I got for my birthday? What? <gasps> awesome. Oh. Oh yes. Oh yes. Um I got a whole set and I so I'm so excited. I like have to tell you the story. So um my mom got them for me and boys know nothing about singing bowls and my sister who's like a huge skeptic of everything. Um, she was here when I opened them. And so she knew that they were like spiritual, but she didn't like understand like what they were. Yeah. And then my boys were with me and they didn't know they were spiritual. They just knew they were an instrument. Yeah. And um, so we like opened them up and I'm like, yeah, you guys, like I really want to play them with you guys. And um, so we were all just dinging them and having fun. And um my one son said, I feel like I'm closer to God when I play these. And I was like, oh my uh, gosh, because I've never, I never said anything. Uh, like, I was just like, I really want to do this with you. Uh -huh. And, um, and then my other son was like, yeah, I feel like there's angels here. And I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> I love that. Um, cool. So like, they really are, you uh -huh. know. Mm -hmm. amazing and they do they like okay they make you just feel so good yeah. so the most unlikely fan of the singing bowls is luke my dog he is obsessed with the singing bowl wow. it is the funniest thing i've ever seen in my life anytime you play them, and they get like really loud like i'm gonna see if i can get this going hold on um, they get really loud and he'll be like right next to me. And I'll be like, there is no way that he is okay with how loud that is. And he's just like, Oh, like he, like, he's loving it. Loves it. Yeah. He loves oh, it. Luke. He will sit on my lap. 
sit so close. He'll like, he'll, he'll like nudge them. And then one time I was playing them and I stopped playing them. And he did like the little bark, like when he has to go out or when he wants me to give him a treat or like when he wants more of something, you know, he wants something. Mm -hmm. He was doing that. Like he wanted me to play more. Like it was unbelievable. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he, he, huge fan. Luke's a huge fan. But anyways, let me see if I can get this going. I don't know if I can. I mean, I'm not not sure how it'll do on a desk, but, um, but anyways, so it comes with like, it comes with a felt mallet and a like wooden rubber ball mallet and you just hit it and then you take it and you okay hold on let me tilt my let me okay there we go all right so you hit it and then you go around the outside like this and then the sound gets bigger oh yeah What's he doing? He's like, that's awesome. Isn't that cool? That's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Yeah. Um. So each one of them, I got um the whole set. So each one of them is assigned to a chakra. So this is the crown chakra. Yep. So this so the highest pitch. That'd be so um, so interesting to see what you what you discover with these. What happens? So I feel that there's a, so much that's going to unfold with that with sound, and that like we're going to uh, Marin and I we're talking about this too, and um, we're going to have some guests come up on the show to talk about sound and um, some interviews. We've got a couple people that are lined up to come and join us, and we're going to yes. have a little series. So if you, I'll put this out here right now. If you have um, a specialty. If you have something that you would like to share with our community and you'd like to come up and talk about your spiritual journey, what you're doing, give us a shout, give us an email and connect with us. And we would love to set something up and promote healing, promote a lot of other spiritual healers, teachers. Um, There's so much we have to learn from each other. So that's really what we would love to network. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yes, absolutely. So, well, some interviews. Sequences. Yes, I think that would be great. And we talked about that before. I know we had Michael Christopher on, and uh, I'd love to have him on again too because he's he he teaches and he's got such great information as well with mediumship and everything else. So, um, yeah, we'll see. We'll see which direction that takes. We've got so many different things on the go, with so many different ideas. And that so yeah we've got some good stuff on the roll um is, is there yep. anything else is there any other anything else that we wanted to share today or i guess that's it that's it that was that's a lot it. that's been, it just a few that's, a that's it two, i know sorry it's just chit chat guys it's been two weeks yeah. we've got so much to catch up on yeah. so yeah we gotta you know gotta we gotta do it we got to do it. We'll see. Chat. Yeah. We'll, fill ourselves we'll in. see what we get back into All next right. week. And let us know in the comments if there's something that you want us to to talk about or something that you would like a little channeling on. And we'll see where that goes. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. All right. All right. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening. And we can't wait to see you again next week. See you later, everybody. Bye. Bye.